Hey guys, welcome back to Pop em Up Cam. And in this video, it's going to be our last on Unit 5 and 15, and we're going to be tackling Gibbs Free Energy. This really does allow us to round off this unit and bring everything we've done together and allow us to make some comments on the spontaneity of the reaction. But first, quick question on entropy changes. Pause the video and have a go to review that. So hopefully for this question, you remembered that the entropy change is going to be the entropy of the products minus the reactants. And they give us those values in the question here. So we're going to do 230 plus 2 times 189 for the products. And then we're going to do 2 times 238 plus 131 for the reactants. And then we're going to resolve that, which is 680 minus 476 which equals 204 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. On to Gibbs Free Energy. So Gibbs Free Energy is basically the greatest amount of work which can be obtained from a system given its conditions. You can kind of think about this as the available energy of a system. Indeed, that's what it was initially called. Now, it does assume no changes in volume and that no heat transfer goes in or out of the system. Now, what this really does is it tells us about the spontaneity of a reaction. If Gibbs free energy is negative, as in it has a negative value, then that tells us that the reaction is spontaneous. If Gibbs free energy has a positive value, then that tells us the reaction is non-spontaneous. If the reaction is equal to zero, then the reaction is at equilibrium, and we'll cover that a little bit more in unit seven. We can calculate this using a simple equation, and you do get given this in the data booklet. And that is delta G, which is Gibbs free energy, is equal to the enthalpy change minus T, which is temperature, times the entropy change. One thing you should bear in mind is that the entropy change are quoted in joules per Kelvin per mole instead of kilojoules, so we have to divide that value by a thousand to get it into kilojoules when we actually process the values. This is by no means the only way of calculating G. Um, as you can see, there are a few ways that we're even given in the data booklet. However, methods that we're going to use in this unit include the delta G equals enthalpy change minus T times the entropy change. But we can also use the indirect method of using Gibbs formation values which are given in the data booklet and creating a Hess's cycle with them. We do this much in the same way that we used enthalpy of formation values where we will have the elements at the bottom of the Hess's cycle with the arrows going up the way to represent the Gibbs enthalpy of formation values. In this video we're going to go through each of those methods in turn and then have a bit of practice as well. Let's look first at the direct method. So here we have the reaction of ethene with hydrogen to form ethane. Now we're not going to be using the Gibbs enthalpy of formation values on the table. Instead, we're just going to plug in the values that the question has already given us, which is minus 136 for the enthalpy change, 298 for the temperature, and minus 121 for the entropy. We've got to remember that entropy is quoted to us in joules per Kelvin per mole, so we're going to divide that term by 1000. And if we resolve for that, we're going to get minus 136 plus 36, which is minus 100 kilojoules per mole. A negative value, of course, indicating the reaction is spontaneous. Now, at standard temperature 298, we can also use the Gibbs enthalpy of formation values, which are also on table 12. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a Hess's cycle just as we would if we were using enthalpy of formations to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction, but we're going to do it with delta G. So we have elements at the bottom and arrows going up the way with delta G across. So if we follow the route going against delta G A here and adding delta G B, so we know that solving the delta G for the overall equation is going to be equals to minus delta G A plus delta G B. 
Once we've done that, we're just going to identify the formula of all of what we have in the second column along and then use the fifth column to find all of the values that we require. And then we're just going to write the values for delta G A, which is going to be plus 68 plus zero and the value for delta G B, which is going to equals minus 32. And then we can just plug in those values at the bottom, which is going to be minus 68 minus 32. And then, of course, that equals an overall value of minus 100 kilojoules per mole. And this gives us exactly the same value as using the delta H minus T delta S equation, which is what we'd expect because we haven't used average values. We've just done this at standard temperature. It is important, of course, to recognize that this method only works when we're doing things at standard temperature as the Gibbs values for formation given in table 12 are only at standard conditions. Indeed, changing the temperature does have an effect on the value of delta G and of course the spontaneity of the reaction because of that. If we look at the equation that we've already used in the examples, we know that delta G is equal to minus 100 kilojoules per mole, delta H is equal to minus 137 kilojoules per mole, and delta S is minus 121 joules per Kelvin per mole at temperature 298. So what will happen if we change the value of temperature? Well, we can see here we have delta H is negative and so is delta S. So we know that at low temperatures, we're going to end up with a negative value. But as we increase the value of T, the value is going to become more positive as the value of the T delta S term becomes larger and the negative negative value becomes large enough to overcome the value of delta H. In fact, we can broaden this and think about how the value of delta S and delta H affect the spontaneity of all types of reactions. In this table, I show that if we have delta H being positive and delta S being negative, we're going to have the reaction being spontaneous at high temperatures, non-spontaneous at low temperatures. Delta H being positive, delta H negative, we'll have always non-spontaneous. If we flip that and have negative and positive, we have always spontaneous. And of course, last, the example we already looked at, delta H and delta S both being negative, we have spontaneous at low temperatures and non-spontaneous at high temperatures. Questions asking about your understanding of this are common in paper one. We can actually calculate the temperature that spontaneity begins at for the reactions that have spontaneity above or below certain temperatures. This transition from spontaneous to non-spontaneous happens at delta G equals zero. So we can use this to solve for the temperature when delta G equals zero. So using the same reaction we've been using, let's rearrange this equation to make it equals to zero and rearrange for T. So we get delta H over delta S and that's T equals minus 137 divided by minus 121 over a thousand. Remember, we're gonna divide by a thousand because Entropy is given to us in joules per Kelvin per mole. So we're just converting it to kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. And that equals 1,132 Kelvin. So that means above that temperature, this reaction would not be spontaneous. Okay, time for you to have a go at a couple of questions. The first question, determine if this reaction of propene with hydrogen is spontaneous at room temperature. Pause the video and have a crack at that then. Pop them up. So in this question, you've been given Gibbs enthalpy of formation values. So hopefully you realized you needed to create a Hess's cycle with those values. So we've kind of got delta G A and delta G B. Now we know from that the overall reaction is going to be going against delta G A and with delta G B. So we're going to have the overall delta G is equal to minus delta G A plus delta G B. And then I'm going to plug in the values that the question gives you. And that's minus 62 plus 
negative 24, which is going to be negative 86 kilojoules per mole. Don't forget the question asked you if it's spontaneous and because it's a negative value, that means that at this temperature, it is spontaneous. In the next question, I want you to use the data here to find the temperature at below which this reaction becomes spontaneous. Pause the video to have a go. Pop them up. So remember to find the temperature of spontaneity. All we're gonna do is take the equation for delta G, make it equals to zero, and then rearrange it to find the temperature. So we get T equals delta H over delta S. And in this case, that's gonna be minus 1560.7 divided by minus 4.6. And I'm gonna divide that by a thousand to convert into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. Solving gives us 339,282.6 Kelvin. This may seem very high, but this is a combustion reaction and we do expect this for very exothermic reactions. So no practical work to go with this. However, there are some questions on a worksheet as usual. And thanks again for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. And as always, practice makes slightly better.